Hi, this is Kurt, Gravestone Pros. We're going to talk about a frustration today that if you've ever sandblasted, you've had it. And there's days when we're busy and trying to get production done and you can't get sand to flow coming out of that sandblaster. You're sick of that, I'm sick of that, and I'll tell you what we've done to try and take care of the problem. Come along. Hello, you two. We're back at it this morning. Jordan and I are here at the Beaches Bridge Cemetery and we have three stones right in a row getting put in here. So we're working on that, making some good progress. We got the bases all here. Two of the dies are here. One of them's still over there, but we're getting her done. stone finished two stones finished one more almost finished we're making good progress eh jordan oh yeah no problem not bad at all all right all three are done we are heading out of here we're back to the shop here jordan i got the stones all taken care of and finished and now i'm working on a few different things here got this columbarium and this jet black two six all polished and a small slant there and so we're gonna cut stencils get these put on and get them ready to go some of the last stones of the year that have to be done so we're gonna get at it here All right, I got these all done. Now all I gotta do is put some stencil on the polished areas to protect it and it will be ready to go. So not too bad, got a lot done. We'll keep moving on them. Got these stones prepped, ready for some blasting. Got that one all done, ready to go. So that is all for tonight. I'm gonna head out. All right, we're out this morning, just set this beautiful stone. Looks really nice, came out really well. One of the ones we've been working on the last few days. I don't know if you can see very good, but we're starting to get just a little bit of snow out here. First of the year. Kind of looks wet and nasty out there. Glad I don't have to be working outside today. It's not too bad. Could be worse, I suppose, for this time of year. Sometimes we have full on snow by now. Dad's gonna take and show you a little bit about our moisture separation system now. I've been gone for a couple weeks, got back. Uh, we were on our 40th anniversary trip, and uh, I want to talk today, uh, uh, address a comment from Matthew asking about how do we deal with moisture issues with our sandblasting. Um, and it, if you've ever sandblasted, one of the first things that you learn is that, that sand and moisture don't mix well. And uh, so you've got to figure that out, and it's different for different situations. For us, we've got a pull behind uh, air compressor, and so it sits outside. So we're taking outside air, compressing that, bringing it inside. You've got moisture. You've got to figure out how to separate it. On our sandblaster, it comes obviously with a little moisture separator, but it can't handle the amount of moisture that there is. So we went at one point, um, talked to different people and got some ideas. And the idea of bringing your air <clears throat> into a cylinder in the middle, you gotta spin that air around, draw it off the top, 
the moisture goes to the outside of your cylinder and will run down. And so at the bottom of that, of course, you have a bleed off that's, that's pulling moisture out. And so the idea that, that uh, I got was to get an old uh, upright air compressor. Um, thought about using an LP tank. People have done that before. Um, but what we had there was it, it was already, it had a stand. It was ready to go. The air, the, uh, air compressor part didn't work. So, and all I really needed was a tank. Took it to a uh, local fabricator and uh, he made me an inlet port in the middle. And so the air comes in and as it's spinning, it's forcing moisture to the side, which is heavier than the air. And so that moisture comes down to the bottom. And uh, <clears throat> it's not perfect. Uh, maybe if I had a cylinder twice as big, I don't know. I haven't totally figured all the, all the ins and outs uh, of it, but it works for us. Um, uh, and some days are harder than others. If you have a lot of moisture in the air outside, it's just, you're gonna live with it. I think that the, the, uh, the, the best answer to the problem is, is move to Arizona with your business. <laughs> but uh, we can't do that, so we've got to do it where we are. Um, but we have found, or we have a Marco, small Marco sandblaster. That seems to handle uh, the, the, the more moist air better than our Empire sandblaster, which is actually bigger. And, uh, of course, they have different mixing valves at the bottom of them. And I don't know. I don't know what the... the the solution to completely solve it um, is is uh, not easily done without spending a lot of money on a refrigeration unit, um, and I don't understand that. But somehow that takes and dries the air, uh, and that that would work in conjunction a lot of times with a, an electric air compressor that you have indoors. But if your situation's like us and you're using outside air, bringing it inside just an issue that we've got to work with and deal with um, but the best thing we found is that using the cylinder and uh, separating that moisture out it's a lot more noise because you've got that you're hearing it uh, blowing off the, the extra air all the time but uh, it definitely is pulling moisture out so far it's working Jordan just came in and said he forgot to open the moisture release for the water separator and uh, said it didn't go very well How's that work, Jordan? Not great. I had to take apart the whole blaster on the bottom. Well, not the whole blaster, but the hose. It was loaded full of wet sand um, and spent probably the next 20 minutes just trying to get that fine-tuned again once I got it cleaned out. Yeah. When you have it all set, working well, once you get it back off, it takes a bit to get her back in so that she's flowing good. So Which that's uh, the importance of the moisture separator for sure which is actually good to hear because you sometimes wonder, you know, is it actually working? But the moment we're not using it, no. there's the story, so. Right. Champion, what do you know about moisture separation? No idea. No idea. I guess we didn't get much help from him. In our research, we were talking to uh, another monument company and one of the things that they did um, is they would have a heat lamp that was uh, set down at the bottom of their sandblaster and it's directed right on the mixing valve and so that mixing valve is, is been warmed up from the heat lamp and they found that, that uh, just keeping that light on there uh, that made a difference uh, for them. We tried it for a little while when you drop things on that lamp it breaks. <laughs> it just wasn't. It wasn't practical for our situation. But I may try it again sometime and maybe set something up different. But uh, for them, that helped them uh, uh, with in controlling the moisture. This has been another edition of Gravestone Pros. Glad you came along with us. Hope that we were able to help you today. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, join us, and uh, every week we try to get one of these videos out something that's informative and helpful. Glad to have you along.